My name is Anita Johnson, and I, I was trained classically and also in the Boston School style of painting. My work, uh, most people would say from looking at it on the wall, it's kind of realistic, but in fact, if you look at it up close, you can see there's a lot of looseness. I hope I'm going to be getting looser as I paint. I like to paint uh, still lifes, landscapes, portraits, people. Um, I like doing all kinds of things. Initially, when I first went to art school at the Pennsylvania Academy, I had no idea how I wanted to paint. Mm -hmm. I envisioned myself as an abstract expressionist, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, I started out a lot looser, and then I uh, discovered there was one teacher there who had a very traditional uh, attitude about painting, and he studied the classics and taught them to you. And so I started to paint, uh, you know, Italian kind of chiaroscuro, painting and that was my initial training. And then I came to Boston and was introduced to the Boston School and I loved the colors, the brighter stuff. And uh, oddly enough, my teacher's teacher at the Pennsylvania Academy was Daniel Garber, who is a great uh, impressionistic painter of landscapes. The colors he used were just amazing to me. And of course it had the nostalgia of being where I grew up. I grew up in that area. And so, um, I hope that in my work I'm really trying to combine the two ways of seeing, the ways of doing. They really are completely different from each other. And it's, uh, it's actually pretty tricky to do that. Um, I would say that, um, historically anyway, Dennis Miller Bunker was one who was known to have that experience where he got the, the Munich training initially and then he, he uh, saw the Impressionist work and he, um, he actually became a recluse for like a year or more of his life to, to work it all out, to move into that better color, the higher key color, and uh, loosen up his brushwork. And uh, it was a totally different experience for him. So in a way, I hope that my work combines the two and takes the best from both, and they enhance each other. It may seem odd to say, but I'd like people to think of or, or just feel some serenity and, and some, some peacefulness. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of artists um, are very busy with a lot of color and a lot of intensity and a lot of movement and all that. And I'm really not into that. I, I'm into, you know, when you walk into a room, you should feel relaxed and, and you should be happy to sit down and take a deep breath and, and you know, enjoy your surroundings, uh, you know, sort of like what Christopher Wren was after in saying that the effect of the room should be repose. Uh, you know, uh, when I've uh, decorated my own house, I have that foremost in my mind, one room should flow into another and you should feel good. You shouldn't walk into a red room and then walk into a blue room and then walk into a yellow room. Now that I'm house hunting, I see examples of that all the time. And I, I think that's a really big mistake. I think things should be harmonious. And, and ultimately, I think really when it comes to art, um, painting pictures or decorating a room, it should have a unifying effect. And, um, and the effect should be one of repose and serenity. That's what I look for in life. It's taken me this long to get to realize that that's one of the major goals, you know. And, and so um, I seek that and I, I really love it when I find it. It's really wonderful to know a group of painters that have a similar sensibility at, at the Guild. Um, because when I was first starting to study and I got into the classicism and everything, I, you know, I, I saw that the world around me, people are doing something completely different with their art. And I just did not feel like I fit into that kind of a thing at all. I saw beauty around me and just wanted, wanted to find some way of expressing that. And um, I felt a kinship to the old masters and the way that they did things and the way they described things. And, and um, so I was very glad to find a group of painters who were like-minded and who, who cherished the same ideals and appreciated it. There are so many artists that have inspired me over my lifetime. My first love was the Italians. And that's probably why I went to Italy to study, you know. Uh, I can remember being a kid and being in the Washington 
National Gallery of Art. And my mother went upstairs to the Impressionists, and I went to the medieval Italian and Renaissance painters. I could spend all day looking at a Fra Angelico, you know. And I, I remember in sixth grade, I did my term paper on Raphael. You know, when I went to Italy, I thought the Italians were the be and all and end all of painting. And then, you know, years later, I discovered Impressionism in another world was opened up to me. And, um, but it's not like I didn't know they existed. I grew up in a town where Ed Redfield was, um, Ed Redfield III was my brother's best friend. You know, and, and so Daniel Garber and, and the Bucks County painters were very much, you know, alive. I do know that some of my first memories are of wanting to be an artist. Uh, when I was a very young child, my aunt was an artist. And um, when she'd visit, she'd come loaded with crayons, watercolors, pastels, and uh, a roll of newsprint, and she'd roll it out on the floor, and all the kids in the neighborhood would come and work on a big mural. And that was a lot of fun. And um, and we, when with the two of us were together, we would set up a still life and paint that. And uh, I think I was seven years old when she gave me my first set of oil paints in a beautiful mahogany box that I still have today. And it, w it was a lot of fun. I, I remember the only thing I didn't like about it was I didn't like having my hands cleaned with the turpentine and having to clean the brushes. It was the only thing I didn't like about painting, but I've gotten over that now, you know. It's hard to say what part of the process I like the most because, in fact, I like the whole thing. I love beginning something because it is really exciting your imagination and, and it gets your brain going. And I love finishing because that's the fun part. It's what you're waiting for, you know, putting that brush stroke just where it needs to be to put that edge on there or the light just right. And, and probably the, the least favorite part is maybe the middle, when now I've, I've created some problems that I've got to solve. And there have been times when I'm, I've been in, in uh, deep water and I had a hard time extricating myself out of something. But that's part of the process too. And, and working through that and getting through that is, is really is fulfilling in the end when it's all done, you know.